in this episode, we are going to talk about what I believe to be the best plugin to develop your film looks. Real quick disclaimer, the Behancer is not sponsoring this video. They just sent me a key and they are offering you guys 10% off using my code VINI10. And I just kept a small portion of that. But this is going to be my personal and honest opinion about it. All right, guys, so we are here in the color page. The only thing I did actually was just color management and just a simple touch in the primary wheels just to increase a bit of brightness. So we're just going to jump on in and go to the plugin. All right. So as I said in the beginning, the plugin, it's called Dehancer. Film profiles are basically the heart and soul of Dehancer. They just, you can see that they put a lot of effort on it. Okay. So let's move it in. First thing that happens when you immediately apply the, the plugin, you see a lot of grain. So for start, let's just remove that just so we can actually see what's going on. Okay. So in order to ap apply the plugin correctly, uh, you need to see what's going on. So this is my IDT. I'm putting this RE image into a Da Vinci white gamut intermediate timeline. Okay. And I'm sending this image to my output to Rec 709. I'm putting this plugin right here, which means he is in the Da Vinci white gamut intermediate call space. Okay. If I put it, put this plugin in here, that will be the correct thing because the source is Rec 709. You can change that. You can see here, you can go in here and change the source of the plugin to the DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Okay, that will be the correct thing to do. But you can always work in the Rec 709 if you want, oops, if you want to put the plugin after your last color space transform node. Okay. Usually people do that in Rec 709. You know what? Let's do in Rec 709. Uh, people usually are doing that in the Rec 709. That's no problem. Let's do that. Let me just take the grain again. Okay. So first thing to do, as I said, set the source. So second thing is going to be just these few things around here. For these ones, you can literally put in here your mouse and you see what's going on. For example, the fringe. Uh, it's to reduce the chromatic aberration. Okay, so let's let's not go through too much this ones. Let's just jump on to the next ones. All right, film developer. About this one, the first thing that we see is the contrast boost. Contrast boost is basically contrast, but in here uh, you're gonna see a bit more control over it. For example, uh, in order to tweak that, you need to click here this checkbox enable. Uh, okay, so this contrast boost, as you can see, it's probably going to be the contrast similar to the HDR. Quick tip, if you guys don't know, the contrast works different in the primaries, primary wheels and the HDR wheels. The contrast in the primary wheels affect saturation, but the contrast in the HDR wheels don't affect saturation. That's something interesting that I find out uh, that most of my students on my color coaching classes, they didn't know about that. Okay, so contrast boost is going to be a tool for contrast. Of course, in here, you're gonna correct your gamma, sort of like a pivot, I would say. Color separation, this tool right here, in order to actually use this, you have to do something with the con contrast boost, okay? if you if it's zero here, the gamma correction, it's not going to do anything like the pivot, as I said. And same thing for color separation, okay? Okay, I'm not going to go through too much about these tools right here. I'm going to go to the parts that I find more interesting and that I've been using a lot, actually. Okay, so when you apply the Dehancer, uh, it already comes with the Kodak Vision 3 250D. Okay, this image, it's interesting because we're not trying to develop a um, joker look here, but you're going to see how you're going to go. 
because if you search on IMDb, the Joker look was shot in a negative that is the Kodak Vision 3 500T, okay? So that's what's magical about this. So push and pull EV in this section right here, it's basically every film behaves differently depending on how much light they receive during the exposure. So this is basically, it's sort of like an exposure, but it's not actually exposure. It's like how much exposure is going to be affecting that type of film, right? So let's increase a little bit to give more a green, clean green, okay? So next thing, film compression. So basically film compression lets you fine tune the redistribution of highlights, okay? So this is impact. The higher the value of impact, the more it's gonna push the highlights towards the midtones, okay? So, but guys, this is something like super finesse. We're talking about fine, super small changes and like really, being picky about the image okay so of course you have to enable that you can check the scopes right there it's really like small changes you know so as this is a tool of compression the tonal range is going to be like zero means zero compression and of course 100 means total compression okay i don't want to dive too much into these I want to get right to this part, but let me talk about this real quick because this is interesting. So basically, guys, the expand is like sort of a control mode of the contrast. So, of course, I have to enable that. So black points. Let's go to the bottom. Let's create this contrast, guys. Put the darkest parts to the bottom and the brightest parts to the top as much as we can. Okay. So let's move this to the top and move this a little bit more to the bottom, creating like a more contrast look, okay? And what it what's interesting that you can do this normal effect in the colors and you can do that in the luma, okay? By just affecting the luminance of the image, okay? All right, this is where, this is the thing I love about this plugin, guys every movie they are they are shooting in one type of film okay for example the joker was shot on the kodak vision 3 500t okay usually when they finish the movie they make it all they made all digital they edit they do all this stuff and after that they print that movie again to go to the movies to presentations that kind of stuff and then a few people, they print in different types of film. So that's the case. Joker was actually printed in the Kodak 2383 print film. So by doing that, okay, you're going to say, hey, it's not, this is not like Joker. But you are having the total foundations that the movie was actually done. You know? So by doing this, you're already using an emulation of the same negative that they shot, the film that they shot, but now you're using the same emulation of the print, okay? So that's what's really interesting to me, guys. This ability to choose the negative and to choose the print is like, that's what I love about the enhancer, guys. This is really interesting. So they're called dehancer because they actually are made to dehance the image. Because, for example, this analog range limiter, it's literally, they're going to set the black points to the incorrect amount based on the film that they are analyzing. How crazy is that? So look at the blacks going to the wrong way. Not the wrong way, like the, the way that they analyze this type of film, okay? But let's go through that. So you have a bunch of other things to tweak right here. Tonal contrast, this is kind of cool. Target white, this allows you to control the temperature 
or of your light. Okay, let's move on to the next one before we go to the special things. Okay, so this is actually where you're going to paint the image. So this is basically yellow to blue, magenta to green, cyan to red. So by moving to the left, you're going to increase yellow and take blue. And then, you know, we have to enable that. So if you want to increase more green on it, move to the right, you're going to be increasing green. Move to the left, you know. This tool right here, Gang, you use to move all the three things in the same time, okay? So in here, you're gonna control the temperature as well, but like separately uh, for the shadows, for the mids, and for the highlights, okay? So, all right, next part is basically uh, film grain. Film grain, you have a lot of control in here, guys. Of course, I have to enable size amount this this is really precise really cool uh the halation of this this is like amazing guys i gotta say i really love the halation of them i i think i rather use the halation from the enhancer over like the building one in the resolve i really liked and highly recommend you guys to try it of course you have the controls over everything oops let me remove the film grain right here so next thing, bloom. Bloom is basically a glow, but in the edges. I really like this because I feel like it's kind of different to reproduce this by changing compositive modes, that kind of stuff. So I really like this too, and I've been using a lot as well. Okay, so let's see the bloom. So it really, just the default is really awesome. Of course, change the impact amplify source limiter allow yourself to test all these tools because if i keep if if i keep talking about everything this is going to be like a two hour video okay <laughs> but uh i'm just doing this video to show you guys how many things you can do with this plugin actually but um yeah film damage it's going to be like uh dust hair scratches stains and um you know uh oops so same thing custom check it out guys this is like this is a lot you know you have a lot of control over everything of course i have to enable remember that hairs dust scratchers it's a lot guys so um and it, i think it's super well built you know you can see that they definitely put a lot of effort into this tool because it's actually amazing. Film breath, it's basically those accidental changes of exposure, contrast, saturation towards the... I don't use these things. It's like super movie, old movie thing. I don't use film damage and um, um, film breath and gate wave as well. I just find myself using a lot the bloom and the halation. In the film grain, not so much. I rather keep using the built in. But film emulation, print, halation, and bloom for me, guys, incredible. Just for these tools, it's worth it. It's worth it with price, guys, honestly. And there's something else. There's something else that's amazing to me okay so in this monitor tab i love this guys these two tools for me like uh, amazing i really love these two tools especially the clipping indication but uh, let me show you first we have false color all right as you guys know what it is uh and this clipping indication i really love it but i find myself having problems when trying to use without my ultra studio 3g so Maybe you need an I.O. device for this. I, I'm not sure if all you guys have it. Probably not. But, um, wow. Okay. Was I wrong? Okay. <laughs> no I.O. device connected now. But I find that this is kind of weird. This thing is awesome, but it's, it's not working 100%. I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong. I'll make sure to ask the guys from Dehancer and... Um, 
I'll be doing this observation in the description, okay? Because I gotta say, this is re really weird because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but 100% that when you're using an IO device, it's going to work all the time, at least with my experience, all right? So output's going to be basically the global blend, as you guys know. So how much we want of that look that we build. Okay, let's put 100%. So as you can see here, the blacks are clipping. Uh, this is amazing, I really love this tool. So LUT generator, guys, I found this really useful when I was grading a video for one of my clients. And after I was done, he said, hey Vinny, can you send me the project? I wanna open here and put some graphics on it and that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay. But um, I was thinking, oh damn, I was using the enhancer for a few shots. So what I did, I generated a LUT with this kind of look and then put in my project and then apply it instead of using the tool itself after I was done, of course. And then the client could open perfectly, all right? So this is terms of quality. I always use on fast. My PC can handle higher, but if you're doing too many other stuff, I really don't recommend it. Just keep it normal fast. You should be fine, okay? All right, guys, that was it. I want to say a huge thanks to the Hanser to allowing me to do this type of video. Again, they're not sponsored this video. This was actually my honest opinion. I really like this plugin because it can build your look as I was showing to you guys, like the Joker having the same foundation. So that's what I really love about the Hanser. Uh, you can use my code Vini10 to get 10% off. I'll just get a small portion of it. It's not gonna change my life, okay? But this is a plugin that I highly recommend. Thank you, Dehancer, again, for allowing me to do this type of video. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Uh, we are making two videos every week, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.